Ahalah Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Rakah Kodash. In Hebrew, that's giving all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, along with the Holy Spirit, who taught us His truth. Honors to the brethren that's laboring, doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which will be the one third of you true biblical Israelites, the lost 12 tribes, which are the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, who are returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. This lesson is going to be titled, Do You Love Your Family and Friends? If so, you will not receive salvation. Yeah, so again, if you love your family and friends, you won't receive salvation. Now, the title itself is kind of alarming, which the title is meant to startle people but we're going to clear it up about what the title actually means. And we can find that in the scriptures. So, yeah, if you love family and friends, you won't receive salvation. But we about to clear that up. So we're going to hit First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love for the father is not in him and just yesterday on a previous similar lesson i mentioned that when it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world things that are in the world that includes people now we're gonna dive deeper now we're gonna show what we mean when we say if you love your family and friends, you won't receive salvation. Now we're going to get into it. So we're going to hit Luke 14 and 26. This is the words of Yahweh Shai himself. If any man come to me, if anybody come to the Lord and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So the Lord said, unless you hate your father, mother, children, brethren, sisters, and hate yourself, you can't be my disciple. You can't be my servant. So that's why we say that, yeah, if you love your family and friends, you won't receive salvation. But we're going to break it down even further. So when the Lord said, if any man come to me and hate not his father, well, the Lord is commanding you to hate your father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters, and even yourself. Now, this not your traditional definition of hate. It don't mean you're supposed to hate your family and friends how you hate the wicked Esau, but we're going to get into it. So, in the Blue Letter Bible, this word hate, of course, it got this um, traditional definition hateful detest detested hatred but if we look down here i'm gonna zoom in on it it reads it reads to love less so yeah this word hate in this context it means to love less so when the lord says if any man come to me and hate not his father mother, children, brethren, and sisters. So yeah, we are commanded to hate our family and friends, but in the context, we're commanded to love our family and friends less than the Lord himself. We shall love our family and friends less than we love the Lord. The love for our family and friends should not be greater than the love that we supposed to have for Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Now we're going to show that when the Lord says 
if any man come to me and hate not his father, etc. He's actually speaking about loving less. Just as we pulled up with the blue letter definition, wherever it went. But now we're going to jump to the book of Matthew 10 and 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So yeah, in other words, the Lord is saying to hate your mother and father in comparison to me. Don't mean hate like you want to kill them, like you want them to perish, but you love them less than you love the Lord. That's what he is saying. And this goes for children, brothers, sisters, friends, even yourself. You should love everything less than you love the Lord himself. Now let's read this. He that love a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So if you love anybody else more than you love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you are not worthy of him. Now, why do we say that you won't receive salvation? Well, before we get there, when you think about um when you think about just us as a people, you know, it's a saying in the world, family over everything. F O E. Well, you can have family over everything, but it shouldn't be family over the Lord. It's the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, over everything. And then how expressive we are as a people, you know, without even thinking, we'll quickly tell somebody that we love them more than anything in the world or we love them more than everybody else, or we don't love anybody else as much as I love you, such as a man and a woman expressing their love for each other, or children and parents and grandparents or other family members expressing their love for each other. Well, that's cool that you love them, but you gotta keep in mind, when it comes to the Lord, you should hate everything else. So when it comes to your family and more friendlier terminology, you should love them less than you love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You can love both, but shouldn't nothing compare to your love for Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. Now, back to the title of the lesson, if you love family and friends, you won't receive salvation. So to finally clear that up, if you love your family and friends, more than Yahweh and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, you won't receive salvation. The Lord said to himself, He said, He that love a father or more or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And what does it mean when the Lord said you're not worthy of me? What did Yahweh Shai say? I'm the way, the truth, and in the light, roughly paraphrasing, he said, I came to bring life that they may have it more abundantly. So if you love your family or friends more than Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you're not worthy of the Lord. And the Lord represents life. So meaning you're not worthy of life if you love your family and friends more than the Lord. You're not worthy of life. You're not worthy of living. And if you're alive and living right now, and you love your family and friends more than Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you're not worthy of the Lord, you're not worthy of life, you're not worthy of living. And for dang show, not worthy of salvation. All right, so now we're going to continue to the book of John 14 and 15. All right, the Lord said himself, if you love me, keep my commandments. Plain and simple. When you love somebody, you honor them. And what do you honor? You honor um, them as a person, but you honor their word. See, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad not with us in you know in a in a in a in, in physical flesh, but he's with us in the spirit. So we honor him by honoring his word, keeping his commandments. We show our love for him by keeping his words. Plain and simple. 
But on the flip side, you show your love for anybody else by keeping a word, such as your spouse, your parents, elders that you might live with, cousins, brothers, sisters. You might honor their word to show your love for them. So that's common. You show your love by honoring one another. Same thing with the Lord. Well, that's a problem if you honor the word of your family and friends over the words of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. If you honor your family and friends over Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, you will not receive salvation. Now we're going to show that. Now we're going to go to Galatians 1 and 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, shall I not be the servant of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach? So yeah, when you show your love for Yahweh Shai by keeping his commandments, that's what? Um... You're pleasing the you you pleasing the Lord, but when you keep the word of men, you know, including women, you know, anybody in the earth, well, you're gonna please them by keeping their word. But the thing is, if you please men, you won't be the servant of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Now you can please your family and friends if it don't involve you transgressing the law. You can please family and friends and honor their words and requests if it don't involve you rejecting the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So nothing in the earth, the things of the world, the people of the world, or yourself, shouldn't nothing make you reject the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know, pleasing anybody or anything else should not become should not come before the Lord. Because if you seek to please men in conjunction with rejecting his word and casting his word to the side, loving Yahweh Shai less, well, you won't be a servant of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And what does that mean? You're going to be rejected. And what does it mean to, to be rejected by the Lord? You're going to die. Because you are not worthy of him. The Lord represents life. He said, I came to bring life that they may have life more abundantly. So if you reject him by rejecting his word, he's going to reject you. Except his rejection means your death. You're going to be canceled. And to take it all the way there, um, to reject the Lord, to reject his word, you're rejecting um, your salvation. So when you would need a salvation, the Lord going to reject you and destroy you. Let's, let's show it. Let's go back. Let's go back to Matthew 10 and 37. He that love a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So you're not worthy of the promises. You're not worthy of the blessings. You're not worthy of his mercy. You're not worthy of his salvation. You're not worthy of anything that's written in his book. Except for death and destruction. If you love anybody or anything, friends and family, more than the Lord himself. Because again, you are commanded to hate your family and friends. Hate meaning what? Meaning to love less. So you can love them, but the Lord said, if you love them more than me, you're not worthy of me. And how do you show your love for family and friends? How do you show that you love family and friends more than the Lord? Is when you attempt to please them and pushing the Lord to the side, pushing his words to the side. So the thing is, when it comes to the Lord, you need to be willing to cut everybody and everything off. 
that's pleasing to the Lord if it requires that. Now we're going to show that in the scriptures. So we're going to hit Matthew 19 and 29. You know, and the Lord himself, he said, everyone that hath forsaken, forsaken in the blue letter Bible, I think it means to abandon. So to everyone that hath forsaken houses and brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. That's why we just say it pleases the Lord if you got to cut anybody and anything off to please him because we're persuading God. We're pleasing God. We're not pleasing men. And then you notice out of all the things that Yahweh Shai said you should forsaken or abandon, it involved mostly family. A house that represents family, your brothers, your sisters, or mother, or father, or wife, or children. Th that's family. If the Lord listed 10 things right here, seven of them was family. <clears throat> so that's the main thing that's required in this walk. Your path to salvation. You got to cut off family. Now, cut off family means you don't check on them no more. It don't mean you don't call them no more. It don't mean you don't visit them. It don't mean you you uh, you ditch them. But you got to cut them off uh, spiritually. <clears throat> and we're going to get more into that. So, you know, matter of fact, let's, let's go to the next precept. What does to, to cut it off, Yahweh Shai also said this in another way in Matthew the fifth chapter. So we're gonna read this and continue. And every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Now the Lord said this in another way, and we're gonna get that. <clears throat> this is Matthew 5 and 29. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it off from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So the Lord saying, you know, cut off your eye, your hand, your foot, if it offends. Now, this is not literal. This is a metaphor because you need your eyes, your hands, and your feet to do the work of the Lord. To be teachers in this ministry or to be a help to the ministry, that's required. So that's why we know this is not literal. This is a metaphor. Now, what is it a metaphor of? The Lord saying, cut off cut off your flesh, cut off different parts of your body. He's actually speaking about your family. If your family hinders your walk in this truth, if your family holds you back from being a servant to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you got to cut it off. Now let's read this again, then we're going to jump somewhere. So again, if thy right hand Excuse me, if thy right eye offend me, pluck it out. Jumping down to verse 30. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. This is talking about your family. Now we're going to do something real quick. We're going to jump to the book of 2 Samuel to show that this is actually talking about your family. So what did King David say? He said in 2 Samuel 19 and 12, <clears throat> you are my brethren. You are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore, then are ye the last to bring back the king? So again, the focus is the first part of the precept. King David said, you are my brethren. He's talking to Israelites, those of his bloodline. So again, he said, you are my brethren. Ye are my bones and my flesh. In other words, he's saying, you my kin. You my kin folk. We blood. Same thing we say today. So that's what David is saying. 
So again, you are my brethren, you are my bones and my flesh. So when we look <clears throat> at Matthew 5 and 29, when it reads, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Or in verse 30, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. Yahweh Shai is saying, cut off pieces of your flesh if necessary, but cutting off the pieces of your flesh is a metaphor for cutting off your brethren, your family, your what? Your what? Your your brethren, your sisters, your mother, your father, your wife and children. That's what the Lord is saying, cut off. When he says, cut off thy right hand, pluck out your right eye, he's talking about your family. If anybody hinders your walk, holds you back from being a servant, if anybody is offended at you, being a believer in this truth, you know, you got to you gotta cut them off. So again, you are my brethren, you are my bones and my flesh. So again, cutting off your right hand or plucking out your eye, that's not literal. This is a metaphor for cutting off your family if need be. So yeah, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. <clears throat> so anybody that's going to hold you back, you know, from being in this truth, if you're possibly going to love anybody else more than you're supposed to love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you're supposed to cut it off. <clears throat> if your love for anybody else going to interfere with your love for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you got to cut it off. And whatever you cut off, let that be cast into the hellfire. And what does it mean to let it, you know, cut it off and throw into the fire? Well, if they don't want to join you in this walk, just let them remain in the world. Let them remain in the congregation of the dead. Because again, the Lord said, it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So it's better for you a, to let them receive their judgment so that you don't be judged with them. So cut them off, detach, or be destroyed with them. Don't let them hold you back. Yeah, don't let your love for your family and friends offend Yahweh Shai. That's why the Lord said, if thy right I offend thee. You know, it's not your literal eye, but again, your brethren, who are your flesh and bone. Anybody that's going to cause you to offend, cut it off. Because if you don't, you are not worthy of Yahweh Shai and you won't receive salvation. Because again, let's, let's read it. He that love a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So if you're not willing to cut off your foot, your eye, your hand, which is symbolic for your brethren, your kin, your bone and flesh. If you're not willing to cut them off, you're not worthy of Yahweh Shai. You're not worthy to be kept alive. You're not worthy of salvation. Give the Lord a reason to want to come back for you. And what did the disciples say? Roughly going back, you know, they pretty much, in other words, asked Yahweh Shai, you know, going back up to verse 27, Peter said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. That all includes people. That all includes mostly people. Again, that's why Yahweh Shai said, And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life yeah so don't let nobody interfere with what you're supposed to be doing you know between you and your Hashem Yahweh Shah don't let nobody pull you and from keeping the dietary laws those are some of the easiest laws to keep 
you're keeping the Sabbath, do what you can. If you're keeping the holy days, do what you can. If you're fasting, reading, praying daily, you know, maintain that. If you're teaching, maintain whatever level that you're teaching at, but always try to abound, meaning increase in what you're doing. You don't let nobody come in between that. Because if you do, you're doing what? You're pleasing men. You honoring the words of somebody else. And when you please men, you reject it for being a servant of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And the Lord's going to reject you and you not going to receive salvation. All right. So now we're going to go to the book of just, just closing out before we continue. You know, the Lord said, if your right eye offend, pluck it out. If your right hand offend, cut it off. That's uh, symbolic for your family causing you to offend your Shai. Because your eye and your hand, that's your bone and flesh. That represents your brethren, your family, your, your kinfolk. Cut them off. Why? Because it's not about them. It's about you. That's why Philippians 2 and 12 were for my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah, so first and foremost, you got to work out your own salvation. If your family and friends going to cause you to offend, you have a Bashim, you have a shot, and you got to forsake, you got to forsake them. You got to abandon them. Now, there's ways you can do it. You don't just necessarily have to completely cut somebody off, but you have to detach and distance yourself from them. Like in the world, they was talking about social distancing. Hey, well, through the spirit, that was spiritual distancing. And the Lord was separating us and removing us from the company of those that we didn't need to be around. And the pandemic was the best thing that happened to me. So, yeah, you got to seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, if you got to abandon, forsaken your family and friends, hey, be an example. You know, it's better that they perish in the fire than both of y'all to perish. So, again, you got to seek out your own salvation. And seeking out your own salvation, you're going to do what? You're going to do what's pleasing to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You're not going to do what's pleasing to men. You're going to keep the commandments of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Because remember, the Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You're not going to keep the commandments or the word of anybody else over the Lord. You're not going to reject the Lord to honor the word of somebody else. Now, you can, again, honor the word of others. If it don't cause you to reject the words of Yahweh Shah, should nothing ever cause you to reject his words? Should nothing that anybody uh, ask or request of you should cause you to transgress the law? If so, you got to forsake whatever they're talking about. And if it's just them, that's going to continually cause you uh, to be at fault. We have about shooting me outside. You gotta forsaken them, cause why? You're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And when we come to Second Ezra chapter fourteen and fifteen, it reads and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Yeah, so you gotta set aside the thoughts that's weighing you down, if pleasing others, family and friends is holding you back from pleasing Yahweh by shooting you have a shot holding you back from being a, a diligent servant, holding you back from seeking out your own salvation, you got to cut it off. You got to abandon them because you're seeking out your own salvation. You don't want to miss your ticket out of here. Let's finish the verse uh, because we're supposed to do what? We're supposed to haste to flee from these times. So that's our only goal, only desire. That's why the Lord says, set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Because anything that's holding you back mentally from seeking out your own salvation, that's holding you back from fleeing these times, hey, it's going to cause you to miss your ticket out of here.
you're not going to receive your salvation. And that's why the Lord said, uh, blessed is he who is not offended in me. Because why are most people offended? Because their family can't get it. They either have white family members because they so-called mixed or come from a so-called mixed family. Or they get upset if, you know, when they hear a, if your grandma don't get the truth, she's going to get killed. If, if your mama and your dad and your brothers and sisters, they don't get this truth, they're not going to make it either. They get offended about that. And, they, and, and, and Jake be ready to fight about their grandma. Oh, you said my grandma going to die? Well, hey, the Lord says, set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. And that's why the Lord, going back again to Matthew 19 and 29, he said, everyone that hath forsaken brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, and children. That's the, that's the, 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 your family and friends, those are the things that's most heavy unto you mentally. A lot of people can't come into the truth because they worry about who they leaving behind. They worry about friends and family. The Lord says, set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Or in other words, set aside your family and friends, forsaking them. Detach. Because your only goal is to flee from these times, seeking out your salvation with fear and trembling. And then when we read 2 Nezzles 9 and 15, it reads, I have said before, and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. So make it easy for yourself now, detach from them, forsake them mentally. Hey, because most of everybody that you know and love about to die, flat out. Most of everybody you know and love about to die. The Lord said, I take you one of a family or two of a city or two of a city and one of a family or if you paraphrasing so everybody you know about to die that's why the lord said uh to everyone that have forsaken brethren sisters mother brother family and friends in other words you know forsake that don't be like lot's wife she looked back and what she got destroyed she didn't receive her salvation why did she look back? That represents being attached to something. You can't take that step forward to get on this path with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and be looking back at family and friends. Because if you look back, that shows you that they still got your heart. The Lord commanded you to hate your family and friends, meaning to love less, to love your family and friends less than you love the Lord. Show that you're worthy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Show that you're worthy of life, that you're worthy to receive salvation and forsake your family and friends, physically and mentally. Because remember, uh, 2 Nezus 14, 15, set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, meaning the things that you love the most, that you attach to the most, detach from it, set it aside. It's going to hinder you in your walk, you know, to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Because again, uh, there's going to be more people that perish than them that be saved. And a common trait among the elect, everybody that's going to be saved, they already forsaken their friends and family. They already set aside the thoughts that are most heavy into them, mainly being your friends and family. They don't love nobody else more than they love the Lord, especially friends and family. And that's why the Lord uh, said, dang. In 2 Ezra 9 and 22, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. So the people that's about to die because they rejected the Lord, they love money, friends, and family more than the Lord himself, they're about to die. 
Because remember, it'd be many more that perish than them that will be saved. And them that are about to perish, the Lord says they was born in vain. And what does it mean to be in vain? It means to be not regarded, not really important, important, meaningless, useless. So the multitude that's about to perish that was born in vain, your friends and family, the Lord said they're not that important. If they if they not that important to the Lord, they shouldn't be that important to you either. The Lord said to hell with them, you should be able to say to hell with them. Really, your friends and family that's not in this truth, that not that's not uh hot for you, how about shimmy how was shot, you should have already closed the casket on them mentally. Me and my mom talk. Me and her both say, you know, all our friends and family that's not in this. We already closed the casket on them, mentally. We already put the nail in the coffin. Yes, and also too, you shouldn't love anybody that don't love themselves. If they love themselves, they'll be um, keeping the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. They'll be in this thing too. Because in this truth, that's the equivalent of taking care of yourself, you know, uh, treating yourself uh, medically, healthy foods. You, you do that stuff because you love yourself. Well, if you really love yourself, you will be in this truth. And if they're not in this truth, do they really love themselves? Because ultimately, this is going to be the, 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 the thing that saved your life. And, you know, for somebody to love themselves, they would want to preserve their life. But since they're not in this, you got to question, do they really love themselves? They don't because they see um, they see all the signs showing that we at the end of times, that the Lord is about to return, that the destruction of America is moments away. You see all the signs, but they still refuse to come into this truth. So do they really love themselves? And from my observation, everybody that's not hearing this truth, they don't love themselves. If they don't love themselves, I don't love them either. They know what we do. They know what we preach. They know what we teach. Prophecy is all over the place. You can't miss it. Yet you still refuse to come hear this word. So obviously you don't love yourself. If it's a, if it's a house burning and... You see all the warning signs that the house is on fire. I try to help you get out the house, but you um, wish to remain in the house while it's burning. You obviously don't love yourself, so why should I love you? The Lord said they was born in vain. They not that important, so why should they be that important to you? You know, just seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Um, make your call to intellection sure, and you're going to get all of your friends and family back in the kingdom, just like Job did. So yeah, if you love your family and friends more than the Lord himself, you will not receive salvation pursuing to, um, we lost it, but damn, that's not it. So, um, pursuing a Matthew 10 and 37. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So your kids, you shouldn't even love them more than you love the Lord. Because the Lord gave you your kids. He can also take them away. And just roughly touching back on 1426, you can love your family and friends, but there's a certain way you're supposed to love them. If any man comes to me, and hate not his father, and hate not his mother, and hate not his wife, and hate not his children and brethren and sister, in his own life, he cannot be my disciple. In context, this word hate means what? It means um, to love less. So you can love your family and friends, but you're supposed to love them less than you love the Lord. You can receive salvation that way. But if you love them, your family and friends, more than anything, you're not eligible uh, for salvation. All right, but that's it for this lesson here. So next time, Shalom.